For those of you who do not know, Hardcore Pawn is a 30 minute show on True TV that follows the exploits of American jewelry and loan. A pawn shop on Greenfield Road in Detroit that is owned and operated by Les Gold and his two kids, Seth and Ashley. The title is a pretty obvious play on words and in fact this is kind of their shtick. The Golds are known for controversy so taking an interesting to say the least name fits right up their alley. When it debuted on August 16th in 2010, Hardcore Pawn brought record breaking ratings to the K Cabler routinely drawing more than 3 million viewers in its Tuesday 9pm time slot. Though there have been many items that carried a lot of history along with them, some people only appeared so they would just use their time on television or even use the opportunity to try and sell something that has no value whatsoever, and even some easy money. With that out of the way, here are 10 times Hardcore Pawn dealt with scumbag customers. Watch Your Back is the name of the season 7 episode that featured a high-end watch dealer and collector who came to the shop to pick up a watch. Since he was Les Gold's trusted friend, Les agreed on giving him a valuable Bretling watch for $42,000 in exchange for an IOU, since allegedly the man didn't have the cash at the moment. $42,500 tomorrow? I will have the payment for you by tomorrow. Gary, you got a deal. Well, it turned out Les trusted him a little bit more than he should have. Rather than receiving a traditional cash payment, the customer sent Les an insane 130 cases full of watch bands to American Jewelry and Loan. I trusted this mother <laughs> and this prick <laughs> me with these watch bands. If I had him in front of me, that son of a bitch. The worst part was that hadn't been the only bad deal at the time, and Les was criticized for already making a few wrong deals. So in the episodes that followed, he was seen desperately trying his best to make things right. When nothing else worked, Les started selling watch bands at a discount price of $2 a piece. And luckily he finally managed to break even with a customer who showed up and purchased all of the watch bands for himself, leaving some autograph versions behind to be sold on the shop's website. In the season 5 finale of Hardcore Pawn, a manager who had been with the store for over 20 years was fired. After a few small slip ups when Les was in a particularly bad mood, his name is Rich Pyle and he had become a fan favorite of the show since the 2010 premiere. I can't believe after 25 years of being loyal to you, I've been more loyal than your own kids have to you. You know what Rich? You. Get out of the store! However, after some time, Rich came back to apologize for what had happened in the previous episodes, and Les welcomed him back. However, he still warned him he would be fired if he slipped up. Luckily, Rich got a chance to prove his worth when a teenager came in with microphones that Rich suspected had been stolen. It was a story of how the seller had acquired the brand new microphones that especially tipped off Rich. The story was strange, as no one just randomly tosses out two brand new microphones into the audience. So they threw these things out into the crowd and you just happen to catch one. So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely inside of this thing? Fortunately, Rich's hunch was correct, as the microphones belonged to a local club owner and they had been stolen from the night before. Rich made sure the stolen microphones were recovered, the crook was arrested, and he got his job back deservingly. At one point, the show documented a sticky situation involving some stolen art being sold to the store for over a million dollars, which could have been by far the most serious scam on the show. Luckily, the real owner of the art managed to call in and clarify what exactly had happened before Les closed the deal. But there's a guy on the phone. He says he's the guy who owns the artwork and he's really pissed. The story goes that Tony and Dina, the people who had tried to sell the art behind the back of the original owner, claimed that Les was a family friend of theirs and could get them a good deal on the art. If you ever watched the show, you know how much Les gets excited about art. So he was about to get it authenticated as one last step before buying. And he also gave them a number as the first step in bargaining for the paintings. They ended up telling the original owner that they were getting it for less and pocketed the rest rest of the money. When you are a pawnbroker, one thing is for sure, there are not two days that are the same. You could never guess who will visit the store and what kind of story they will carry with them, or whether or not they will attempt to scam you. So when a woman came into the pawn shop trying to return diamond earrings, no one could have expected what she would try to do. She wanted to return the earrings for cash because a diamond was missing from one, but she claimed she didn't have a receipt. Unfortunately for her, there were a few problems. The first one was the fact that you can't return something without a receipt. 
but even if she had a receipt, she couldn't get cash for it, as the receipts from the store specifically state this. Do you have the receipt? Uh, no. Do gifts come with a receipt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, well, this one didn't. But the bigger problem was the diamonds were fake. This woman was trying to scam these pawnbrokers and she got busted. Even after she was caught, she wouldn't admit defeat as she started yelling and trying to cause a scene. Oh, um, excuse me, anybody buying any jerry from here? Don't get no more jerry from hey. here because this ain't good. Hey, hey. She didn't want to give up on her cash grab, but there was no way she was going to be permitted to stay. In the season 6 episode called Lawyer Up Son from 2012, a woman came in to redeem her son's pawn of her mother's gold ring. However, she was told that he had no pawns on file at American Jewelry, although she insisted that she needed some information on a $10,000 ring pawned by her son. Though she later produced her pawn ticket, Les found it to be counterfeit. Counterfeit ticket. Man, f this Y'all on some bull Y'all on some straight up bull Bet you y'all gonna pay me for this ten thousand dollar ring. There are two scenarios for this unsuccessful attempt. For one, it could have been that her son gave her the ticket, as she said, and gave her the fake ticket to try and cover up the fact that he had stolen her ring and sold it elsewhere. However, the woman and her friend could have also been running the scam on their own, trying to pressure Les into paying for her allegedly lost ten thousand dollar ring. Whichever it was, they left, threatening to come back with a lawyer, and they did. Of course, Les readily explained to the lawyer why the the ticket was obviously fake. The number on the ticket was too long for one, and the type on the back, which Les explained was information required by state law to be in 12-point font, was in too small type. The numbers don't match up. The paper stack doesn't match up. This is a fake. Speaking of receipts, every person coming to the shop trying to return something should know that in almost 100% cases, the pawn shop seller would ask you to show a receipt. So when a man came in with his iPhone 4 saying he had bought it in the shop two days before this episode and asking for a new one, he was asked for the obvious receipt. Unfortunately for him, not only could he not provide one, but he also included that he bought the phone for $2,000 and felt like he got scammed. Get me another phone, that's all I'm asking for. As soon as you give me that receipt, I can see what I can do for you. I don't have my receipt. I just clearly told you that. This further proved that he was lying, since used iPhones don't normally cost that much, and not knowing what else to do, he began blaming it on a confused employee and began to act very bitterly. Oh, hold on. No, guys. no, no. Don't touch him and let him go. Man, you and your mohawk, shut the hell up. My mohawk doesn't talk. It clearly does. Clearly it's it does. with that goatee, now, too. The goatee does talk. Damn. Though it's never a pleasant thing when you have to deal with customers trying to scam you, it's even worse when that happens to be one of your employees. That's why no one could forget the dramatic moment when beloved hardcore pawn security guard Joel Big Joe Shannon was caught stealing on hidden camera. After various items went missing in the store, Les grew some suspicions, so he decided that he was going to catch the culprit red-handed. His plan was to leave a diamond earring as bait with a hidden camera pointed at it. Then, all he had to do was wait and sure enough, the next next day it was gone. No one could believe that their own head of security Big Joe took it, even though Les argued that the white guard couldn't have done it. Les later said that Joe had owned up to the crime and pulled out an assortment of jewelry from his pocket which estimated at over $7,000. The easiest way to get through to an employee is to tell them your sad story. Either you lost a loved one or that you got fired from work and not being able to support yourself. On the other hand though, it is okay to ask someone for help. Manipulating others into giving you stuff is a completely different thing. It's not uncommon for an average pawnbroker to hear a sad story, but often, people who come to the store turn out to be real scams. One such case happened in an episode when a mother who is supposedly divorced and unemployed and expecting a child came in looking for toys. She was so convincing that she made Ashley completely fall for it. I'm a single mother. My husband just left me. Really? Yes. By not only selling a $20 rocking chair for only $5, but offering the woman a job at American Jewelry and Loan. What happened next was one of the most ridiculous scenes on the show. When they went to load the toy she bought into the truck, the mother gave a fake birth straight on the parking lot floor. Then off she went with her husband. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, my pleasure. Anything to help you and the baby?
It turns out not only do scammers appear on the show, but there have also been some criminals. David Kapuczynski was first remembered after a video of him attempting to intimidate Seth Gold on Hardcore Pond surfaced a few years ago. I'm gonna allow you to pick up your ring when you have the right amount of money. You're not listening to me. I am hearing you, but you're not listening to me. However, one day, officers responded to a 3.30 a.m. 911 call only to find Kapuczynski attacking his girlfriend when they arrived at the scene. When they warned him, Kapuczynski still refused to comply and was tasered twice. He died as a result. Kapuczynski's girlfriend later said that she and her children loved him and that there were no previous incidents of domestic violence. In fact, she claimed that her boyfriend of six months had been loving and supported her emotionally and financially so that she could go back to college. The last one on the list is not a scumbag customer, but actually a member of this famous family who betrayed the family business. Ashley Gold spent nine seasons on her family's popular reality TV show, only to leave her father and brother to break out on her own. The former manager of the jewelry counter at American Jewelry and Loan has started an online jewelry pawning business with her own website. In addition to the site, she also has an accompanying podcast. She claimed that she wanted to leave for health reasons so that she could spend more time with her husband and two children. Working with her father in the family business was always her dream, but she was never treated with much respect by the customers, let alone her father and brother. Ridiculed about her weight and her competency have plagued her interactions with customers at the store and even among her family. Perhaps these were the reasons she eventually decided to leave. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.